Hi everyone, blessed and beloved people of the living God. I can see each of you there on online. Thank you, thank you, beloved of God. As usual, it's Sunday morning. We are tuned in and we are together once again. Hi there, everybody, everyone. You are a blessed, blessed, blessed people of God. Thank you for being in church this morning. Hallelujah. 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 So once again, we have time together this morning and we are going to make the most of it. You don't want to miss this, mor this morning's message. You don't want to miss anything of it. So stay tuned in. I'm going to deliver the word as the Lord has given it onto my, into my heart. And I'm so, so excited for seeing you all on live Facebook. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Uh, you know, I preach Jesus Christ. I preach Jesus Christ crucified. And I preach him according to the revelation of the mystery of Jesus Christ. It's, for me, it's, it is the most wonderful, glorious thing ever. Because I have reached that point where I begin to understand, begin to understand Christ. And God revealed him unto us. So I deliver unto you what I have received from the Lord. So that you can be blessed. So that you can grow. So that you can reach the highest potential in Christ and for what he has for us. My teaching this morning is chosen Christ's image, our destiny. Chosen. Christ's image, our destiny. Let me take you into the Word. Let the Word speak for Himself once again this morning. Let me just be the channel and let God, the Holy Spirit, reveal unto you this morning. I just want to say this hour is... For me, the most important thing in my life this morning. Because I want God to speak to his people. I want my life to be fulfilled in whatever he has called me to do. So that's why I am here. That's why I am giving you the word. And I believe with all my heart that God is going to do something miraculous. You know, yesterday morning, I want to share this with you. God has revealed unto me in a supernatural way. In a supernatural way, God has revealed unto me that he's going to open the sea for me so that I can walk through on dry ground. You know, God is so faithful. He is so faithful. He is there all the time. And I'm so, so excited because I know he's in charge. Let me speak to you a little while from my heart. Just from my heart so that you can understand. And I hope you can understand what he wants to do. You know, some of the church, my concern this morning is this. Some of the church never get to the point where they are able to release the inner man in active Christian living in their daily life. And that's so sad, you know. That's so sad to me. And I'm so concerned about this. Because there are some of the church that never reach that point, never, where they are able to release their inner man in active Christian living. 
And that is what God wants us to do. That's why they never get into the success of the word, of what God's kingdom wants for them. That's why they never, they never get into a place of victory. Because the reason for this is because they struggle all the time to get the outer man revived and are focused on which can help them to motivate them and stir them in the outer man. With other words, they are focused on everything in the physical. Everything in the physical. And that cannot help you. That's why they never get to that point in the spiritual where they are victorious. You know, some of the people are so full with the negative news. That is all that they are saying. That is all that they are telling people is those negative news and negative things. And there are never, never spiritual things in them that reveal what Christ has done for us and what he wants us to do. That's the reason they will never grow. You know, when you are drawing the things unto you of this world, the negativity and all the rubbish of this world that they are trying to, to put into people and you put it in yourself, guess what? Those are the things that you are going to release all the time. You will never be able. There's no place for Christ and those things in you. So we have to make a choice by ourselves to get rid of those things. And the outer man, let me show you some thing, things. The Lord has given me a scripture to give to you this morning before I start. It is so important for us to know that it's not about the outer man. God will take care of your life. He promised it. Jesus said it. He will take care of your life. If you are looking for righteousness, if you are living in righteousness, if you are allowing righteousness to live through you, God is obligated to look after you. He promised that and he cannot lie. The outer man cannot help you. It will not help you to try to stir the outer man and feed him the things of this world. He will never, never be able to help you. He needs to be on the altar. That is, that is important. Listen to what the word of God says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Listen to what Paul says here. He says in verse 15, For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might through thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God, for which cause we faint not. But through, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. You must understand this. While we are on this earth, it is not God's ultimate for us. God's ultimate for us is still to come. It's not here on earth. You know, the outward man will perish here. And listen to what Paul says. He says, though the outward man perishes, the inward man is renewed day by day by day. That is glorious. That's a, that's a promise of God. Now, we have to live after the Spirit. God will take care of our outward man. That is what He promised. Now, this morning, I want to share with you that you are chosen. You are chosen. Can I ask you, that is one of my concerns, that many, many of God's people will never go back, never to listen to this video or watch this video again. The reason for it is 
that they are not interesting in the spiritual things of God, but they are more interested in what they are doing, what they achieve in the flesh, in the physical things. But those physical things cannot help you. I want to tell you straight away this morning, the physical and the natural things cannot help you when it comes to the things of God. So I ask God that our people will get so spiritually hunger that they will get into the word and listen to this and watch this again and again until Christ is formed in you and you begin to understand through revelation the glorious, wonderful thing that God has for each and every one of us. Now, let me say this this morning. Do you know, do you really know in your heart that you are chosen? Just think, uh, just think on this for a moment. You are chosen by God. You know, this week when God has shared this with me, I could see the importance of this. It is so marvelous and so important that God has chosen us specifically in him before he has created the heavens and the earth. I want to share this with you. I want you to listen to me quickly this morning. Listen here. Listen here. In Ephesians, in the book of Ephesians chapter 1, listen to what he says. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4. Let me start reading from verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according as he hath chosen, there it is, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined or predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. <coughs> God hath accepted us in the beloved. He hath chosen us. When he, say, when he said that, that he has chosen us, He's talking about those that have accepted Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. Those that are born again and have invited Christ into them and have been changed into a new creation in Christ Jesus. Just think on this, that he has chosen us before the foundation of the world before he created the heavens and the earth. He has chosen us in Christ Jesus that we should be holy, that we should be a new creation. There's a reason for this, and I'm going to show you this reason. God, by choosing us through his purpose at the beginning, God has created the human being. You have been created a human being. God has created us human beings that we may know him, that we may know him. Just think on this, that a human being must get into a position where he is able to know God, able to know him. 
That was his purpose. That we must be able to know him. Hallelujah. And to be conformed to his image. Now, let this sink into you this morning. God wants us to understand that we may know he has chosen us that we will be conformed into his image. Hallelujah. Into his image. Listen to what he says in Philippians chapter 3. When he's talking, when Paul is talking about knowing him which is very important. Philippians chapter 3 verse 7. You can go back and study it for yourself because every single word here was being written by the Holy Spirit so that you may know the heart of God, so that you may know Him and know what He wants for you. For you. In Philippians chapter 3 verse 7, but what things were gained to me, those things I counted loss for Christ. Listen to what Paul says. Paul was an educated man. He had everything that this world required. But yet he said, all things were gain, that was gained to me, that I counted loss for Christ. Yea, doubtless, I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. Here it is. That I may know him. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection. That means a lot, saints. That says, said a lot. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Not only know him, but also the power of his resurrection. And also the fellowship of his sufferings be made conformable unto his death. That means that there are certain sufferings of Christ that you and I may know and be made a com conform conformable unto that sufferings so that we may know Christ here on earth. Like I said, it's not God's ultimate for us here. Here we will go through sufferings because of Jesus Christ. That we may know him and understand what he has for us. For there is a glory that God has purposed for each and every one of us. For you and for me. For God's ultimate plan was the image of of himself, the image of Jesus Christ. Right from the beginning in the Bible, right from the beginning, we can see that God has made it clear that it was his desire that we should be in his image. Now follow me carefully. God has planned for a human being to be in his image, that we should be conformed into his image. That's why he created man in that matter, in that way, to work to that promise, to work to that, pro to, to that purpose, where we will be able to be conformed into that specific, wonderful, glorious image right from the beginning he made it clear now understand this this morning understand this we as you as the human race here on earth are different from any 
other creature. You are different, created different from any other creature. You are special. You are different from angels. That's a fact. You are different from the devil. You are unique. God created us unique. That's why he has purposed for us to one day be conformed into his image. So much so that the devil was jealous, jealous of this new, of this creation that God has created us. And he hated you. He hates the human race. From the beginning, where he has seen that God has created a creature different from any other creature, different from any other heavenly creature. <coughs> what was God's plan for this creation? This human race that he has created. We're going to see this this morning. You are going to see what God's plan was for this creation. Just know this, that you are unique. The human race are unique for God's plan. That's why he created us. And the devil hates you. He tried anything and everything in his power to destroy what God has created. He was so jealous of us. So that's why from the beginning, he tried to change us into his image. He tried to change the human race into his image, image by lying to them. Through deception, through lies and through every other thing. <coughs> he tried to change us into his identity from the beginning, from the start, from Adam and Eve. He wants us to have his identity, his thinking, and his thoughts. In the beginning, he tried to put his thoughts in man. And to a certain extent, he succeeded because he got man in a position where they believed him and have been changed at the fall of man. When man fell in the garden and believed the lies of Satan and through his lies and his deception, where he tried to change us into his image, received death and corruption and mortality in them from the beginning. So man has sinned and came short of the glory of God. And as a result of that, man died and become mortal and received in them the thoughts of the devil, the mind of the devil, the awareness of sin, of filth and man immediately was aware that they were sin and that they were naked and they lost their covering, their glory in, in the garden. <laughs> but God had a plan for this creation. That's why he created us. God had a plan and a purpose before the foundation because he knew that that is what's going to happen and that he will put his plan in action in the human race throughout the ages and eventually bring them to a place where his purpose will be fulfilled. Where, where this man will get into a place where God wants them to be. His plan was to change us back into his image. To bring us to a place in our lives, the lives of the human race, 
where they will get to a place where they receive immortality in themselves, not in the physical being, not in the natural, but where they will receive God himself on the inside of them, where they will receive eternal life in them where they will receive God in them, where they will be one day changed into the image of Christ. And I'm going to show you in the Bible that that was the plan of God. So be, so be assured this morning that God is busy right now bringing you, educating you spiritually, getting you ready for the glory that's going to be revealed in the sons of God. That he's going to reveal the image of God in us. That he's going to bring us to a place where we've been changed in the image of Christ, of God himself. That's why he's giving us everlasting life so that we may have. Now, listen to me carefully. <coughs> He did this so that, he may, that we may have his mind, his thoughts, his identity. Remember, the human race has received the thoughts and the mind, the thinking and the, and the identity of Satan in the human body in the human flesh and the natural thing. Now remember this now, that God's purpose was to bring us to a place where he will put his thoughts in us. You can either have in God's kingdom, you can either have God's thoughts, his identity, or you can choose to have the devil's identity or his thoughts. There's no other way. There's no other way. Now, God has given us the choice to choose for ourselves. Remember, we, we now at this moment, before when Adam sinned, we had no choice in it. So all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Throughout the ages, Death had come upon all men because of Adam and Eve. But now God is giving everyone a choice to decide for themselves whether they want his identity or the devil's and stay in the devil's or have his thoughts. So that's why we preach this word so that you may see that God wants his thoughts in you, his identity. You are not a chance. Listen to me. You are not an accident. You are not an accident. You are not here by chance. You are here by God's purpose. Remember, you are here because of God's purpose. You are not a chance. Isn't that amazing? That I have been chosen to go through this world. And begin as a human being. And end up as a God being. Being changed into the image of God. So I rather choose to be here, here right now. And walk through the school. And get through everything here. That I may reach that point in Christ. That one day I will be clothed with my heavenly home. And I'm going to show you in this Bible. I'm going to show you in the word that that was the promise of God. And his promises are yea and amen. God cannot lie. He's not a man that he should lie. He's talking the truth. He's telling the truth. He wants you to know the truth that you are not a chance. You are here. You are not an accident. God 
created man twice. First of all, he created you a human being. Then he created us as a new creation in the inner man. He has given us a new man on the inside. God's plan was for us that we should be created in Christ Jesus on the inside, the hidden man of the heart, the spirit man, become a new man. And that the outward man, the outside man, must die and be crucified on the altar as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God. Why? Listen to what Romans 12 says. It says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your body, that's the outward man, as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Then he continued by saying this, and be not conformed to this world, but be he transformed by the renewing of your mind. God is giving us the exact steps from the old man to the new man, from the old life to the new life, from destruction to everlasting life, to glory, to victory in Christ Jesus, from the old man to the new man. He's giving the, us the exact thing. So he created us for the last time, for the second time. Those that are obedient and surrender themselves unto God. He created them in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus, you are acceptable unto God. <clears throat> Notice that you are not acceptable by yourself. Only when you are in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus, we are acceptable unto God. So with other words, God has created you and me as a new man on the inside. In Christ Jesus, alike, like him, to be one with him, to be acceptable unto God. So no, now those that are born again on the inside have become a new creation on the inside. You are now one new man in Christ Jesus, one with him. In the eyes of God, you look alike. You are the same as Christ on the inside. One day, one day, God's purpose is one day, that new man shall be revealed with Christ because now we are hidden in Christ Jesus. When he shall appear, we shall appear with him and we shall be glorified and that hidden man shall be revealed in all the glory of God as the sons of God. That is the plan of God in the image of Christ, which is also the image of God. Now, God created us as a new man now through Christ Jesus a spiritual man. So he sent Jesus to this earth 2,000 years ago. He sent Jesus himself. His wisdom. Jesus came. He made him unto us his wisdom. And by his wisdom, he created all things. Christ was there all the time. He's God. The Bible says that he shed his blood. We are sanctified by the blood of God. Through the blood of God, we are sanctified and our sins are forgiven. So God sent himself in Jesus Christ. In the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word was with God and all things were created by him. Without him was not anything created that was created. And all that has accepted him, he has given the power to become the sons of God. So we learn 
that Christ is actually God. He sent himself, his wisdom. He was made unto us wisdom to die, to die on the cross so that he may change us. You know what the death on, cross, on the cross has made for us? Has accomplished? The, the, the death of Christ, of God himself on the cross, has accomplished something for us. That death has changed us, has given us the chance to be changed back from that what the devil has put us in, to change us back from a mortal thing, from eternal death to immortality to everlasting life. Christ was raised from the dead so that you and I may have everlasting life. His death provided for us everlasting life and has provided for us the image of, of himself, the image of God, so that we can, could be changed back into the image of God. Now listen to me. One cannot receive God's image unless it, be, it come through a godly death and sacrifice. That's what I say. You see, God is so, God is so clever. God is so amazing. Nobody ha can know the wisdom of God that God knew in order for his special race to be changed into his image, to know him, he himself must die. He himself must give himself for a sacrifice. <coughs> so there must be a time or there must be a place where human race is in a place of destruction and death so that a God being can come and die and sacrifice himself and being raised from that specific death to give us everlasting life, to give us his image. God knew that only death, sacrifice and resurrection could provide his image. Isn't that glorious? So he has chosen that he will die in our place. <laughs> That's why, listen, all scripture come in place now. That's why Paul says, he says, he, Jesus Christ, when he came to this earth, he cannot not as robbery to be equal with God. He didn't think it was a robbery to say he looked like God. He was like God. He said, but he humbled himself, made himself of no reputation <coughs> and took upon himself the literal form of flesh and blood and became like us for a purpose. He, God, become a human being like us and became like man, even the obedience unto death so that he may die himself. Look, a body, Paul says in Hebrews, God came to this earth, a body was being provided for him. A body was being made for him. The body of Jesus was provided for him, a human body without sin, with the blood of God, because the Holy Spirit was the one that provided the blood of Jesus Christ, Christ in Mary. He did not receive his blood from man because blood of man was sinful. The Holy Spirit came upon her and provided her that being in her, that body that was being formed in her with the blood of God so that he could die on the cross and shed the blood of God 
so that we, the human race, his special creation, the unique creation, may get into the place where what he has purposed and planned and receive the image of God so that we may know him and be in his image. That's what he says in, in the Bible. Now, that's why Satan was created. Satan was created for this purpose. Because this was the purpose of God. It's a specific purpose. Why? Because he said he has purposed it before the foundation. Before he created the earth. Before he created the heavens. Satan was created to transform man into corruption so that God could change them from corruption into incorruption. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because he wanted a God being to reign with him, to have fellowship with him. <clears throat> Let me begin to show you quickly what the Bible is telling us about this. I'm going to show you here in the Bible what the Bible, what God is telling us. Let me show you in Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, verse 18. Romans chapter 8, verse 18. Listen to what Paul says. And I believe that when Paul wrote this, he was so under the anointing and inspiration of the Holy Spirit that he could not control himself. Because I can see right through his writing here that he rejoiced. He could not control himself. Listen to what he says in verse 18. He says, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. <laughs> Here Paul is starting telling us, to tell us. He says, I reckon that the sufferings that you're going through here, yes, you suffer here. You suffer. I suffer. The human race suffer because of, uh, uh, of, of this fallen state of, of the flesh. Of what has happened through the fall. We go through suffering. But he tells us something is coming. God's purpose is about to be manifested. It's, it's, it's about to be shown and come to pass. He says, for I reckon that the sufferings of the present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. Can you see that? Now listen. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. He says that the creature, the creature is the creation. The creature is the sun and the moon and the earth and the stellar bodies and the heavens and all those things that were created by God. It's the creature. He says the creature waiteth with expectation. It means looking forward. Even creation is looking forward. He's looking forward for us to be manifested. Because God has promised it. God has submit creation. Unwillingly, creation, not by itself, but unwillingly was submitted unto corruption so that God could fulfill his plan. Now creation is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God so that itself can be set free from corruption. That's amazing. This is what God wants you to know in your spirit. He wants you to rejoice. That is where your song is born. That is why, where your worship is born. That's where the glory and the anointing is born. That is where my joy is born. It's on the inside. When I begin to see the revelation of the Christ. And what he has done for me. 
I can't begin to rejoice like he said yet. He wants, he waited with expectation for the manifestation of the sons of God. For you and me, that specific day where the sons of God are going to be manifested. And then he explained, he says, for the creature, let me, let me show it, it's in the Bible. For the creature was made subject to vanity, was su made subject to destruction, not willingly, but by reason of him who hath subjected the same in hope. God hath subjected creation in hope, the same way as he has saved us in hope. And that's hope that we cannot see now. Then it's hope. Then we are looking forward to it. God wants you. And this is what he tells, told me. He said, tell my, my people, tell my people that they must renew their hope. That they are must looking forward in hope. In hope what is to come. So creation is also waiting in hope. Because look at what he says. Because creature, the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption. The bondage of corruption unto the glorious liberty of the children of God. Oh, from here on the scripture becomes a melody. It becomes a melody. It sings a song. It brings life straight into my heart. It's doing something to me. It does something for you. If you begin to see this, listen to what he says. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travail in pain together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the spirit, even ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to whip the redemption of our bodies. God is going to redeem our bodies. When he comes, that is the hope that we are looking forward to. That our bodies are going to be changed. This body, the promise is here. God, when he comes, the same spirit that raised Christ Jesus from the dead. If that spirit lives in you, the same spirit that raised Christ Jesus from the dead will change your mortal body, will make alive your mortal body. And that day, that day when it comes, we will put on incorruption. When this body will be changed and we've been dressed with our home from above. That's what he's talking about. For we are saved by hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for it? But if we hope for that which we see not, then do we wait for patient, with patience for it. That's what I say. Now God wants me to tell you, people of God, that you must stand with the patience of the Holy Spirit in that precious hope. Doesn't matter what happens around you. What is in the physical? What injustice is happening? Lies, the world is full of lies and injustice and corruption and deceit and lies and all kinds of rubbish. Don't get into it. He told me, I told you last week, he said to me, don't go there. Don't go in the false things. Don't go in the religious things that are conformed to this world. Stand in hope. Get into this hope. And I'm bringing you the hope this morning. I give you the word that is being revealed. So that it can stir your inner man. And that is what he says here. We do hope with patience. For that specific day. For that specific day. Let me quickly in a few minutes that is left. <coughs> reveal unto you. That specific hope. What God is talking about. Let me reveal it unto you. In verse 28, in verse 28, Romans chapter 8, verse 28, listen to what he says. Paul says, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. That's why he gave this word. That's why he gave it. 
not for anything else. He wanted you to know because he has chosen you, because he has created you, a new man, all things, doesn't matter what's happening, all things will work together for good to them. To who? Listen. To who? To them that love God. Those that are born in Him, love Him with a love that has been shed abroad in their hearts by the Holy Spirit. To them who are called according to His purpose. I just told you, the, I just explained to you God's purpose. That He wants to change us into His image. And now He said He has called you. That call means when Jesus Christ was being preached to each and every one that are born again, you have received an invitation. That calling means an invitation to everlasting life. You are called and you have accepted that calling. And I've been changed into and created in Christ Jesus unto a new man with a new identity. The identity of God. And this is what he's talking about. Those that are called according to his purpose. <coughs> now listen to this. Listen. For whom he did foreknow. Now he comes exactly to the point. And he tells you that I'm born again. He foreknew you. He knew you before he created anything. Because you were in his mind. Because of his purpose. Isn't that amazing? Sure. Isn't that amazing? For. He uses, he start off with a verse. For, with a word. For. I, he said that. For. Whom he did foreknow. He also did predestinate. Not only knew, he not only knew you, but he also, before the world, predestinated. With other words, he has given you a destiny before time. Man, he has given us a destiny. We are just, we are made in him. We have a destiny. We have a destiny. Listen here. He predestinated us. <coughs> what was the predestination? He's giving us it here. He tells us exactly. Listen here. He predestinated us to be what? To be conformed into the image of His Son. There you have it. Destined for the throne. Destined to look like God. I'm going to show you why I say you will look like God one day. It's not my theory. It's the word. You know, to some people, this is too much to take. That's why they laugh it off. But God wants you to know that's the reason for man. That he is a God that want to share his throne with us. This is the destiny to be conformed to the image of his son. Notice he uses the word son. Because son, when you get to the place where sons is being revealed. When Jesus was raised from the dead, he was revealed as the son of God. <coughs> A son is the one that is being raised from the dead. A son is the one that is one with God. And here he wants you to know that we are destined for that same image. That same sonship. That same glory that's going to be real. That he might be the firstborn. He says that he might be the firstborn of many brethren, like I said to you, he said that because so that he can be seen as the one that first died and was rose from the dead. 
that we that will follow him will be the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, and so on, and so on, and so on. He has prepared it for us. Isn't that amazing? Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them also he called. And whom he called, them he also justified. He said, he has justified you. In whom he has justified, them he also glorified. God did not only give you righteousness in the inner man. He also justified you. Took away your sin. Washed away your sin. And make you just as he is just on the inside. So why do we just look at the flesh and allow the flesh to control us? Because he has done this marvelous thing. <coughs> Let me quickly show you before my time is over. Let me show you in the scripture so that you can have it. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, this in the same chapter, he is now revealing unto us the, the mystery of the, of the rapture. But I'm not going to go there. Before he's talking about this, this is what he says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Chapter 15, verse 45, he says, And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul, the last Adam, which is Christ, was made a quickening spirit. Howbeit, that was not first which, was, which is spiritual. It means when, from the beginning of the world. But that which is natural and afterward, that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth, earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven. As it or as is the earthy, so are they that are earthy. And as is the heavenly, so are they also that are heavenly. Now listen to this. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, he says, as you have borne the image, this outside old man, and his desires and passions, as you have borne of, or carried the image of the earthy. We shall also bear the image of the heavenly. That is the promise. The image of God. He says straight away that we shall bear his image. That's why he says flesh and blood shall not enter into the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Let me, let me quickly show you in Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. Let's, let me run through it quickly. Colossians chapter 1. Verse 40. Paul says, I press toward the mark for the price of the high calling of Christ, of God in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore as many as be perfect, this minded and if anything ye be otherwise minded God shall reveal even this unto you be thus minded what what he's saying to us now nevertheless where do we have already attained let us walk by the same rule let us mind the same thing Brethren, be followers together of me and mark them which walk as ye have walked, as, as have us for an example. We must be an example. We must be as an example for Christ. He has given us this. Now, we are looking forward to this promise, God has given us the promise. And according to this promise, our hope is this. Sorry, I have read. Was it the right place there? It was Philippians. Sorry, Philippians chapter 3, verse 40. 
Sorry, Philippians chapter 3 verse 40. Now I'm going to Colossians chapter 1 verse 3. Let me say it right. That one that I read to you was Philippians chapter 3 verse 40. I'm giving you now Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1 verse 40. Listen to what he says. In Christ whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Who is the image? Now listen to this. He, Christ, is the image of the invisible God. Didn't he say in Romans chapter 8 that he purposed that we should be conformed to the image of Christ? Now he tells us straight away, he, Christ, is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For by him and he says, for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible, invisible, whether they are thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things and by him all things consists. So God wanted us or God wanted to change us. That was his plan that we should put on the image of Christ. Now let me finish off, off with this scripture. Fasten your seatbelts. Listen to this. What he says in 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 17. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 17. Now the Lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty. But we all with open face Beholding in a glass the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even by the Spirit of the Lord. This is amazing. He tells us that we are being changed into the same image from glory to glory by the Spirit which is in us. And then he continues in chapter 4, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God. Here straight away, the Bible tells us, the Holy Spirit tells us that Christ is the image of God should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus, the Lord, and ourselves, your servants, for Jesus' sake. For God who commanded the light to shine out of the darkness has shined into our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Now, the word of God, let me finish with this. The word of God provided for us the truth to tell you that he's busy here on the inside to change us into the same image. He has preached the gospel of Christ, which is the image of God has preached the image of God unto us so that you and I may know that now at this time we have received this godly treasure in an earthen vessel and that we carry this treasure in an earthen vessel that one day God is going to change us back into our destiny where we will put on the image of Jesus Christ in incorruption and be like him and reign on the throne. You know, those that are born again throughout the dispensation of grace are the only creatures or creation, the new creation that are going to put on Jesus Christ 
and the image of God and be on the throne with him for eternity. To reign with him. To be like him. To be in his presence. You know what, a, what glorious promise is this? That you and I for eternity are going to be in the presence of God. His throne. You know what glory is that? I cannot start to, 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 to try to explain to you the glory that's there. This is amazing, saints. He want me to deliver it to you, to tell you, listen, forget about what's going on. The time has come. It's very short for the return of our Lord to come and get the church. You, me, you, me, to change us. I don't care what's going on. He has done a marvelous job in me. He will not allow us to perish. He will open the sea. He will let us go through dry ground, saints. You and me and everyone that I believe in. Thank you for listening to me this morning. God's blessing is upon you. Because you are blessed in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Now already, through the operation of the faith of God, you are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So that blessing is with you. If God be for you, who can be against you? Love you all in Jesus' name. Until we meet again. Bye-bye. In the name of Jesus. Amen.